Okay, good morning. Back in the studio today, got a couple of sessions I'm gonna have to set up for in a minute. But before we did that, I wanted to make a quick vlog, 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 vlog. Anyway, I wanted to do something less formal. I've got a new microphone on the camera. I've got the Rode Video Micro that I'm testing out. And none of this is sponsored content. This is just something that I bought to test it out so that I could do more handheld, close to the camera vlogging style stuff. And so, did a little research and this is the one I ended up on. And this whole video, the audio will be with the Rode Video Micro. I've also got a bunch of questions about the EOS R5 because I've been making videos about it because I have one and a lot of people don't have one yet and they want help making their purchasing decisions. So I'm going to go ahead and answer some of those questions while I'm testing out the microphone. I'm going to have to probably stop in the middle and go set up for the shoot and then I'll do the rest after the shoot. But anyway, here we go. First R5 question is, is R5 able to trigger the Canon speed lights wirelessly without attaching to an external transmitter? So far as I can tell, no, the Canon's speed light system has a really good wireless built into it and I, hey, they haven't built a controller into the camera yet that I can see. I don't have any equipment to test that, but um, I did a little bit of research. I looked that up and I can't see anywhere that it does. So I think the answer on that one is no. Anyway, thanks for writing in. Sorry, I couldn't read your name. It was in Japanese, I think Japanese, but the, uh, you know, the, the question itself was in perfect English. Alab Sharma writes in, can you please share a video regarding the test for dynamic range as well as still photography? And so I am working on creating some stills videos with the R5 this week. I've got somebody coming into the studio and they're gonna be filming behind the scenes. And I'm also gonna be testing the RF 85 2.0 and the 35 to one point something, yeah, 35. <laughs> 35 macro 1.8. Um, those lenses are coming and I should be getting them actually today. I'm pretty excited and I will share those videos as soon as I possibly can. It takes a little while to produce them. Howard wants to know, have I tried hand holding for stills and how low a shutter speed were you able to go and still be sharp? Me personally, as far as I really, really, really like sharp images. And so for my eye, I was able to hand hold at over a second without an image stabilized lens and still get an image that was acceptable to me. I thought that was actually pretty rad. So some people, if you're shooting with a wider lens or they don't necessarily need it to be quite as sharp as I like it to look, that's fine. Or if you had an image stabilized lens, you might even be able to go for longer. And and so that was my initial test. That's pretty impressive to be able to comfortably handhold. Now that doesn't include subjects that are moving. Obviously that's gonna add a different type of motion to your shot, but acceptably sharp images very easily at a full second. And some people could probably do more and more if you had an image stabilized lens. Okay, I've got a client coming in in a couple of minutes and I'm gonna go set up a background for that shoot. So they should be in and out of here in about 15 or 20 minutes and I'll come back and I'll do some more. anything that I never want to do again. It's tearing things down and setting it back up. I need, I need minions. <clears throat> yeah, minions would be great. Okay, I'm back. Next question, Eric writes, Hi Gary, is there an option to change to back button focusing as they have on other cameras like my old 70 Mark I? Yes, absolutely. I didn't actually have to set it up. It just kind of works and I think that's gonna depend on what focusing mode you're in. But I just shot with the R5 in this session and I use back button focusing a lot. So yes, it's, it's there uh, and, and I love it. I use it all the time. Gio wants to know, is there a setting when you review photos that are taken portrait style, vertical, when you turn your camera, the image turns automatically based on the direction the camera is turned. So far as I could tell in the settings, no, I didn't find anything like that. But if you can find that, anybody watching, go ahead and put that in the comments and then we can get Gio a, a better answer to that question. Image and Film writes in, in response to my question, asking you guys, what is a good use case for 1.6 crop mode? And he says 1.6 crop use case. Instead of buying a 1.4 or 2.0 extender, you can crop in for getting extra length out of your lenses. This helps for everything from sports to birding to landscape. Okay, 
Great answer. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Patrick wants to know, Gary, I too have my R5. I found out the hard way that my strobes won't high speed sync with the R5 yet. Firmware pending, I suppose. Wondering if you've had any compatibility issues with the R5 with any of your existing equipment. Well, I'm in the studio and I don't shoot with high speed sync very often, so I actually haven't tested that, but I'm sure that after a little bit of time that will all get updated. It takes a little while. Like Adobe just came out with the ability to, to view these images. So it takes a little while for this stuff to happen. So hopefully we'll get firmware updates all the way around. That's, this is a problem with buying a new camera early, like being one of the first people to buy it is that nothing works with it <laughs> for a while. Like I'm a Capture One user and I'm still waiting on Capture One to be able to see the raw files out of this thing. So for now, I'm actually back to using Adobe Camera Raw. Missy wants to know, finally, Missy wants to know, I would like to know how face recognition focusing compares to Sony. Also, I wanna know how the 7200, which looks small, compares to the original Canon 7200. Also, is it easy to use focus points as the 5D4? I just switched to Sony this year, but if this camera measures up to the Sony in terms of advanced focusing capability, I would love to switch back. Well, Missy, everything that I've watched and seen seems to indicate that Canon's autofocus is now caught up to Sony with Nikon lagging a little bit behind. I think before long, everybody's gonna have just these top-notch eye-tracking autofocus systems with the pets and the birds and the bats and the bees and, and whatever else. So everything that I've seen says, I don't have a Sony to compare it exactly, but I have been looking and apparently it's just as good. And in some tests I've seen does a little bit better, but I think that's gonna depend. I know everybody has certain brands that they like. As far as the 70 to 200, I haven't tested the new RF one yet, but everyone I know who's used it, who has it, says that it's incredible. My thing is I don't really love the sort of the lipstick extension of it. I, I, I guess it's, I'm just not used to it. I'm used to having the gigantic thing there. I'm really waiting to see what that 70 to 200 F4 looks like because I don't have a lot of reason to shoot at 2.8. And if the optics are equal and the lens is a little smaller and lighter, I actually may go that way, but I'm going to wait till it comes out before I make a decision on what I'm going to get. Take a second and like this video. It's very, very easy to do. Hit the thumb and subscribe and the little bell and the whole nine yards. And let me remind you, I also have a podcast that comes out every week. It's called Photobomb. I co-host it with my good friend, Boo Ray Perry. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel and the podcast in the description of this video. If you have any questions about the EOS R5 or something that you want to see me do with it, look out coming up in the next couple of weeks. I will be doing some live still shooting with the R5 and testing out more of the audio capabilities of this Rode Video Micro. So that's it for right now. Like, subscribe bell, all that jazz, you know what to do. I gotta go back to work and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.